This is called Building on the Miracle Consensus. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that. And I was on working group one, uh, a so-called lead author, one of many. I was very proud to be part of that. This is deliberately provocative, so please be provoked, okay? Um, this is, uh, on the right-hand side, is, a, is just many of the, most of the uh, lead authors at the third, I think it was the third lead author meeting in Hobart. Uh, you might just be able to make me out. I'm in the bright yellow T-shirt at the top right. So when you, <laughs> when you talk of... Uh, Sometimes people, you're introduced as the IPCC lead author and you don't really know whether to correct people or not. But here we are, here are all the lead authors. So the question I wanted to ask really was how, and some people are concerned about this, how could we possibly come to a consensus? I mean, is it that, um, is it that we're actually kind of all herded by Thomas here? That here he goes, one million words now. That's how many words there are on the IPCC Working Group 1 report. And scientists are like cats. I mean, we... we are not herdable. Ask any university, and we don't like to agree. In fact, we're motivated by not agreeing. So how do we possibly get to the point where we can agree? Is it the Intergovernmental Panel of, of Cat Control? <laughs> no, it's not. And there part of the reason we agree is because some of it's obvious. It's been obvious for a long time. OK, so let me just give you one example of this. This is one of the key statements from the uh, SPM of the IPCC AR5 Working Group 1. It is extremely likely that human influence has been the dominant cause of the observed warming since the mid-20th century. Very important statement. Um, that extremely likely in IPCC parlance means 95% confidence. It means there's only 1 in 20 chance that's not true. But if you go back to the AR4, read very likely for that statement. That's a 90%. And likely in uh, the AR, uh, the, the third assessment report, the TAR, 66%. And we even said discernible, or not we did, but the people who are writing the report discernible impact on climate in 1995. Okay, so we've, this is not, in a sense, a lot of this is not new. We just know more and we have more certainty. And if you're being really provocative and naughty, you might say we're more and more sure about the obvious. We're also not sure about the things that are not obvious, which I'm going to come to. Okay, the problem is that CO2 keeps going up. Um, this is the CO2 at Mauna Loa that we've seen. Uh, it's now over 400 parts per million. That's certainly the highest rate, 100,000 years, maybe more. This is when we first said discernible, it's the IPCC. This was when we said highly likely, uh, very likely and extremely likely. And if you can see what's happening to that CO2 record, then you're better than me. We don't really know what would happen without the IPCC, but the problem is that we're not solving the problem. <laughs> okay? um, and the CO2 increase of 40 parts per million since human impact became discernible. So that's quite a concern. So is it still possible to avoid two degrees of the conventional mitigation? Now, two degrees is the target that's been set as part of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change as a dangerous level. This is a figure you've already seen. There are two scenarios on here. One high scenario, which is the orange one, with the snappy title of RCP 8.5, and a low scenario called RCP 2.6, which is the blue one. And the IPCC says global surface temperature change for the end of the 21st century is likely to exceed 1.5 degrees relative to 1854 scenarios. In fact, it's likely to be blown out of the water. Um, the only one that avoids this is RCP 2.6. And I'm going to show you what that scenario actually means. OK, so this is the CO2 emissions. I'm sorry about the nature of this graph. But this is the CO2 emissions for these four scenarios we looked at. We are considering predominantly the upper one, RCP 8.5, which is sort of the one we're on at the moment, unfortunately. And RCP 2.6, you see CO2 emissions have to peak within the next decade and come down. And what I really draw your attention to is that in many scenarios for RCP 2.6, the emissions go negative. Okay, and imagine what that means. In order to avoid two degrees according to those scenarios, which are generated by integrated assessment models, which have economics in them that's supposed to be consistent with, with other things, um, you need negative emissions for a significant period. Okay, so that's the two degree target that we're aiming at, and the scenarios say you need negative emissions. And that is actually a form of what's called geoengineering. In fact, that's, that's an, based on an assumption on BEX, that's biomass energy and carbon capture and storage, which you suck CO2 out and bury it, basically. Okay. So is it still possible to avoid two degrees of the conventional mitigation alone? I don't think so. Um, maybe, but it's a risk. And then the question that I pose to you is, or generally I pose, should we give up on the two degree target or consider more radical approaches to avoid two degrees, like geoengineering or ex extracting CO2 from the air? And those things have consequences. They have significant consequences. And that's too hard for me to answer, so I'll let you decide. Thank you very much.